Hello and welcome. What we're going to be looking at in this video is we're going to be looking at really interpretation and action. And what we're going to be looking at is not only uh, how to use interpretation strategies, but essentially the other things that you need to consider when you are interpreting a text. And those three things are your text, your context, and theme. Okay, so we'll go through those in a moment. But essentially, the reason why you would look through those things and interpret those equally is that not only are you interpreting ideas, you're interpreting a text. And those things need to work in context. So if you're interpreting ideas which have wildly varied, and when you're trying to write a response about them, it's very difficult if they've essentially got nothing to do with what the text is actually saying. Now, while there is no right or wrong answers to interpretation, some are a lot obviously better than others. And the one thing that you want to be keeping when you're writing a response is consistency. So your response is consistent with the ideas that you're um, giving and suggesting. So if you've got a number of different um, uh, theories about what each part of the text is trying to do which don't complement each other, what you're going to have is an essay which doesn't make a lot of sense or any kind of response that doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. It basically enables you to um, answer your question more effectively and to give you a stronger case. All right. So this is what you'd be looking for. So to start with, text basically um, looks at the style and the text itself. Um, so if it's a film, if it's an image, if it's a... Um, a poem or whatever it may be has a huge influence on you, how you interpret it, especially through the mediums, because obviously the mediums you'd be looking at will represent things far more differently than pretty much anything similar. So if you look at how something's presented through a different kind of text, it's going to be a lot different from how it can be interpreted from the same type of text. You get my meaning. So. The style is a very important thing, and especially the type of text is also quite important. So, you look at things like language, as in how, it, how language is used, and what sort of effect language creates. The visuals, what sort of visuals are used, and what, again, what effects can they create. The structure, as in how is the text structured. How, is, there, is it long, is it short, um, how, are, how is it basically, is, is it laid out? The style of it. So does the author have, or the director or the creator have a particular style which they use throughout the, um, the text? And how, again, does it influence it? The techniques that they use. So whether it be um, language or visual, what sorts of techniques inf influence it? It's voice, actually, who's speaking. The characters which are used throughout the text as well. And finally, the story. Now, some of these do overlap with some of the uh, strategies that you'll be looking at and some of the strategies for interpretation. But the thing is, they've also got to complement these as well. So while a something that you're interpreting, you may interpret the style of something, it's also going to be the style which is common throughout the text as well. And so you need to make sure that your interpretation of the style of the bit you're interpreting is one you could also give the text if it's consistent. If it's different from the rest of the text, then you've obviously got to point out what's different about it and why it's different and why it's important that it's different. So even though these overlap with some of the strategies that you'd already be using, you need to look at it in terms of the perspective of, well, this is really talking about the text as a whole and what you're doing when you're interpreting is you're only interpreting a small part of it. So when you're interpreting a small part of it, obviously there are going to be some over things that overlap with the whole text. Okay, the context. So look at it in terms of its background and also how it's constructed. All right. And different texts in different times are going to be constructed in different ways. So it can relate to the social, cultural, and religious background of the author, the subjects, or even where it comes from. This can involve history as well. So if you look at, the, at that image there, for instance, there are a number of different cultures and um, contexts which clash. Now, in terms of an image, this can happen, and particularly it, it depends on the subject, of course. But in terms of um, how a text represents things, it can be done differently depending on the era. 
Um, the nationality and identity of the author obviously is another consideration, as in where this comes from, the point of view and, and the person, because obviously these things can be different even within a country. So you need to look at the identity of the author and basically who they represent themselves to be and who they represent themselves to be in a text. Now you won't often mention these sorts of things, particularly the identity of the author, but one thing you will do is you'll consider it and consider it in terms of how you would interpret it. The fragment versus the whole text, as I mentioned before, this is a, a consideration because you need to make sure that your fragment you're analysing is representative of the whole text and the things that you're saying about that fragment. So if you're interpreting a particular language technique or a particular scene, you need to make sure that it's consistent what you're saying with the whole text and what you're constructing is not isolated um, chapters or lines, you're actually interpreting the whole text. Because the questions won't be asking you for small sections, they'll be asking you for the whole text. And you'll be using small sections to justify it, so you need to make sure they all fit together. And narrative arc and representation is the other thing as well. As in, it needs to follow on basically what I was saying before, but it needs to also be consistent with the story, as in you can't interpret something which doesn't really pan out in the story, or through its method of representation, as in if it's not even representing that. So you need to look very, very carefully at those things and make sure that what um, you choose, what ideas that you um, suggest, actually fit in with the text and don't go off on their own tangent. So you need to also ask basically this question, which is, does my interpretation fit in with what the rest of the text does? And you need to ask that every time you interpret something and make sure that it does. Because if it doesn't, as I said, it's going to make it very difficult to construct a strong case because what you're going to be doing is you're going to have your argument all over the place. It's going to mean different things. It's going to contradict itself. And ultimately, it's not going to really address what the question's asking. Okay, the theme is the final thing. And basically, to look at the purpose and message of the text. And again, you don't want this to be conflicted. So if you do know the theme, as in you have an idea of this text is about this, then your interpretation should match the ideology contained within that theme, as in it needs to match that idea. So if you're interpreting something and saying that it represents death, and then you say, well, the text is about life, well, hang on, that doesn't make sense. So you need to make sure that it connects with that theme and that it continues to um, discuss that theme. If you're saying it's about life and death, sure, you can talk about both. But if, it's, if you're saying the text is about one thing and then you're interpreting a different pa a section of the passage and say it's something else, then it's not really going to fit in. I know it sounds obvious, but believe me, I do get a lot of these responses that do conflict even with their own theme. If you're not sure of the theme or not really, um, or even if you're just trying to work out what the theme is and you're trying to work out through interpretation, then you should basically match the mood and style of the representation which is used throughout the text. So in other words, it should basically fit in with um, what it's like when you read it. So if, it, if you say that it creates, um, if a technique creates a fun atmosphere and the te whole text is gloomy, then questions are going to be asked unless you say why that section is fun when the rest of the text is gloomy. So you need to um, look at that as well. And it's essentially, th it's these two things that you'd be looking at in terms of okay, this is what you're going to be discussing. You're going to be discussing your theme in some way, shape, or form, or at least what the text is trying to communicate. Okay, so an example. A walk through the rain. What is the possible meaning of this statement, or as it, is, as it could appear through a text? If a character walks through the rain, or if you see an image of someone walking through the rain, or if there's a film with a sequence of someone walking through the rain. What does it mean? It could mean that, 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 that. All those things. So it can be something as trivial as forgetting an umbrella to something which is stylistic, as in it creates a shroud-like effect. It can be something as depressing as sadness or as happy as renewal or cleansing. Could be bad luck, bad omens, freedom of spirit. There are a number of different conflicting ideas here. 
And this is why having the text, context, and theme in mind is important. Because what you'd be looking at could mean a number of different things. Now, in terms of what we're going to be looking at here, we're going to be looking at this image. And so the image here is our text and context in our theme because of what it's showing and what this image represents. So let's look at what this image represents and then which one of these definitions of this idea, this thing that we're interpreting, is the best fit for it. Okay, so the text. You've got a visual text which shows um, two people, male and female, and they look like they could be in love. Okay, and then we've got the context. So what do we see in the image? We see a moonlit night, we see a modern city couple. It's a solitary image, so there's no other images to conflict with this meaning. So we're only going to be looking at it in terms of what this image is saying. But the one thing we can tell from the context is that it's a night time and it's a modern setting. Okay, so we've got a visual text, looks like lovers, moonlit night. The theme, the theme mood sort of feels happy. We don't really have a theme here, but we do have a, a sort of a very happy mood because we've got this nice warm lighting and this sort of sense of warmth that even on a gloomy rainy day, we've got this very bright lights and you can see the, the lights there, they make you almost feel warm. So combining all those things together, what do we have? What can we um, suggest the answer is? Freedom of spirit, of two people young and in love. So people who are free in spirit because they're almost careless enough to go walking through the rain, that they're free and that they're in love and they don't care what they look like to other people. That is what this image represents. Now you could argue differently, but based on the evidence that I have here, this is an interpretation that I've got based on those other interpretations I gave you before. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean this, but as I said, it's a fairly good representation because we've looked at the text, the context, and the theme, or at least the, um, the mood and the ideas that it seems to be giving off. And we've got a, a description which very much fits in with all of those things. As in the spirit of um, freedom of spirit seems to fit in with the, the aesthetic of them being lovers. The modern sea and the moonlit night, okay, yeah, it all fits in there. And the happy mood, okay, so it all fits in. So in summary... In able to be able to interpret a text, this is what you need to be able to do. You need to first of all use that framework of text, context, and theme. And you can't ignore them. You need to make sure that you do discuss them and that you do go through them in depth. And you need to connect them with the best meaning. So like we did there, finding the best meaning is essentially where you need to look at going. Now I could have given you any one of those 12 um, answers I gave at the beginning, and gone with that and stuck with it and went, oh well. But what I've chosen is the best one because I've really looked at it carefully, thought about these things, and given the best possible answer that I think there is to the question. Otherwise, that's it. So until next time, I'll see you later.